Welcome to Global Legacy Fight Night. I'm Danielle Manuel. And of course, the time is now for Dylan Carmen. His confidence is higher than ever, coming off of that heavyweight championship back in October 2014. I'm here with Dylan Carmen. Dylan, last time you were in the ring, it got a little wild. Yep. It ended up being a slugfest. Yep. Um, what do you expect tonight against uh, Kiros? Uh, you know, it, it, just boxing. It's not going to be this like the same fight. Uh, I'm not fighting Eric Martel again. Uh, he's a mountain of a man. But uh, no, it's going to be a crisp fight, and uh, I'm going to try to be a little bit smarter in this fight. I'm in better shape this time. More time on the, uh, you know, on the notice. So I'm in better shape this time. So it's going to be a lot more boxing. You know, better crisp, crisp boxing in this one. Second time on national TV, uh, and you know, fighting here again in, in Canada. How what does that mean for you? Oh, I love it. You know, uh, any time that we can get on TSN and uh, and uh, represent Canada, you know, being the being the heavyweight champ now, uh, I have to represent our country as best I can and uh, as as much as I can. So, Global Legacy is uh, is helping out big time and uh, giving me every opportunity that uh, that I need. So I just got to take advantage. All right. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Dylan Carmen has knocked out six out of seven opponents as a professional, and it's safe to say that he will be looking for the knockout here tonight. Dylan Carmen and Benito Quiroz. Hey, country, come As you can see, Benito Quiroz just a little bit lighter than Dylan Carmen here tonight. The experience, perhaps the most pertinent information on the graphic here tonight, and we'll have to share this with the viewing audience. We do happen to know that Benito Quiroz has more fights than what are officially listed on his record. We have seen fights of his that have not gone onto his official box rec, so the gap in experience is probably wider than what you're seeing on the screen right now. A big test for Dylan Carmen tonight in the opening bout. And here we see uh, Dylan Carmen uh, making his way to the ring. Gracing his hero, George Chevallo. Troy, another honor for him to be able to fight in front of his hero tonight. George making the trip all the way to Montreal to see Dylan fight. You know what, Corey? This is, this is, it sets the stage. Being able to fight in front of your hero like a George Chevallo. And it just brings the excitement to boxing. And Dylan pumps him up, gets him ready for a big fight like this tonight. Certainly one way to pump up the crowd here at the Olympia in Montreal with Dylan Carmen. Let's take it up to a ring announcer, Pierre Bernier. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for eight rounds in the heavyweight division. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the Mexican national champion from Nuevo Laredo, Mexico. Introducing Benito El Asesino Quiro. The corner in the red corner, official weight 233.2 pounds. His professional record, an excellent one. Seven wins, six big wins coming by way of knockout in nine outings as a professional. He hails from Maydock, Ontario, introducing the reigning Canadian heavyweight champion, Dylan. Bay Country Carmen. Now we the referee, Michael Griffin. All right, you men receive my instructions. Protect yourselves at all times. I want you to touch gloves now. You're boxing at the bell. God bless you both. We are set for our opening bout of the evening. Benito Quiros, the man on your left, taking on Dylan Carmen. And for Carmen, this is the first fight since winning the Canadian heavyweight title. And on most writers' ballots, winning the Canadian fight of the year in that fantastic bout against Eric Martel at the end of 2014. Round one, this one is scheduled for eight. Dylan Carmen in the red trunks, Benito Quiros in black. Already you can see the height and length differential that Dylan Parman will enjoy in this fight. We've seen different sides of Kiro's throughout his career. Earlier on in his career, he was a real banger. He was a guy who liked to move forward, who liked to fight on the inside. As time has gone on, Troy, he's starting to become more of a veteran. He's 41 years of age. He needs to pace himself a little bit more. He's liked to slow the fight down a lot more as years have gone on. 
Well, well, definitely, Corey. With experience, it it brings more relaxation to you. You know exactly what to do, what what to do inside of the ring. He has to go in there. He has to be relaxed. And he, as an older fighter, he has to pick his pick his punches and pick his pace. Big right hand from Carmen. That certainly got the attention of Kiros, but he walks right through it. Well, Kiros is the guy that you don't have to look for him. He will be right in front of Dylan all night. Dil Dylan can throw big punches, but at the same time, Kiros, he's gunning. He's there to take the punches and keep on throwing. Carmen did admit when we were talking to him before the fight that this probably isn't going to be the wild kind of brawl that he had with Eric Martel, that Kiros was going to keep the pace uh, a moderate one, and that he wouldn't be able to fire those right hands all night like he was against Martel. Well, as you can see, Corey, um, Dylan's taking his time. He's setting up the punches. Kiros is pretty much trying to defend himself right now. He goes with his back against the ropes, giving Carmen room to operate. And Carmen giving his punches room to breathe along the ropes as well. And you see Carmen's game plan, like a lot of fighters who have his kind of stature, who have his kind of frame, let's dangle that jab out there and come behind it with a straight right hand. Well, that's exactly what Dylan needs to do, uh, Corey, is just use his reach. Because he's a much taller fighter, you can see exactly what's going on in, with with Kiros and where the punches are coming from. Kiros right now is throwing big big shots, big shots, big hooks. The body work from Carmen, and that might have got the attention of Kiros as well. Ten seconds left in the opening round. Things are heating up right away in our opening bout on Global Legacy Boxing. We are back on a Global Legacy fight night. Benito Quiros on the receiving end of some big shots from the Canadian heavyweight champion, Dylan Carmen, in the opening frame. Round two begins here, scheduled 4-8 in our opener. And for Carmen, this is part of his quest, a march towards the Commonwealth title, which right now is held by Lucas Brown. Part of this fight is proving that Carmen can defeat fighters who are outside of Canada, giving him different looks, different styles of fighters. That's a big right hand once again from Carmen. But if Carmen wants to make a statement on the world scene, Troy, he needs to start with this, this level of opposition first. Yes, Corey. As you can see, uh, Carmen right now is throwing straight punches, and straight punches are the way to go for him because he's fighting against a, a smaller opponent. And he, like I said, he has the reach advantage on this guy. And he can see everything that's coming coming from from him, whether it's low punches or his, or his body shots. He's able to see the big picture. Just like how he started off the first round, he needs to stay relaxed and keep popping that jab. Well, both fighters, especially on the inside, have kind of fallen in love with that uppercut. And Carmen, in particular, has landed a couple of them. Showing some offensive creativity here. And this is where Kiros can do his best work on the inside. We mentioned he did a lot of that earlier on in his career. Well, Corey, that's exactly what I said. Um, with a guy like Kiros, you don't have to look for him. He will be in front of Dylan all night. Dylan needs to keep him off him and get his reach so he can actually land uh, the big shots. So he can keep so he can put Kielos away. At least so far, we can throw out that notion that we were floating out there that Kiros is going to want to slow this fight down because right now he's the one pushing the tempo. And it digs to the body once again. These two heavyweights going back and forth. And so far, it has not been the boxing exhibition that Carmen promised. It's been a bit of a phone booth slugfest thus far. That's right. Um, Carmen needs to get back to just boxing, 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 boxing. Stop looking for the big shots. They are, they are going to come, set, set it up, and they will, they will, like, they will come. Half a minute left to go in round two. 
This is a fantastic pace for a heavyweight fight. Don't have the stats in front of us, but well above the average number of punches for this weight division. Final 10 seconds as Benito Quiros gets back into this fight against the Canadian heavyweight. Welcome back to Global Legacy of Fight Night. Dylan Carmen is in tough against Benito Quiros here in our opening bout. And that right hand sends Quiros through the ropes and now to the canvas. That will be a knockdown. Referee Michael Griffin sends Dylan Carmen to the neutral corner. A good turn of momentum for Carmen after a bit of a dicey second round. It was a, it was a, it was a good left hand from Carmen. He took his time and he set it up. Kiros was coming in and he let his hands go. I think Carmen's starting to realize just what he can do when he gets that space from Kiros and isn't engaging in this kind of phone booth war that Kiros wants. Great right it's, hand down the middle. Buckles Kiros once more. And that's exactly what that's exactly what Dylan needs to do is keep landing punches straight down the middle. As you can see, Kiros just coming forward. Kiros not really coming in behind anything either, Troy. He's just kind of not really moving his head, just moving his gloves as kind of a mirage that there's a moving target, but there's not. He's right there. Exactly. That's exactly what I said. He's going to come straight forward, and you don't have to look for this guy. But you have to have the effective punch to put him away. Bit of a revenge bout for Dylan Carmen in some ways as well. Because Benito Quiros has a win over Chukunoso Okafor, who has a win over Dylan Carmen. He says that a win here tonight and a conclusive one would put that to rest. But right now, Benito Quiros teeing off a little bit in the corner. The one thing that Dylan did, we, he took some time off. He, had he took time to rest. And you can't rest against it, this guy. That's what he's looking for. Big left hook from Kiros. And now he has the Canadian heavyweight champion backing up. Kiros looking for his third Canadian upset in the past five years. Boy, you take that knockdown away, Troy, and this is a really tough round to score. That's right. Dylan needs to get back on his jab and keep this guy, try to keep this guy out as much as possible. Stop trying to throw big shots, one shots, and start putting his combinations together. Kiros will be on him as much as possible because it just makes it for an easier fight, a phone booth fight like you said, Corey. Well, after a rough start to the round for Benito Quiros, he is right back in this one and making it a brawl. Welcome back to Global Legacy of Fight Night. And if you watched the first edition of Global Legacy Fight Night, you kind of got the impression that Dylan Carmen was an exciting fighter. And he is proving that to be true once again. A slugfest so far with Benito Quiros here in round four. He's back to jabbing and moving that's exactly what he needs to do is jab and move to keep kilos away from him well the pattern thus far troy has been the early parts of these rounds carmen is doing what he wants and he's at range and he's using his jab and then kiros just starts to chip away as time goes by Kiros has a walk, sort of a walking down mentality. There's no punches coming behind it, but it's a walking down mentality where he's smothering Dylan, making him work harder than he needs to work to keep him off. Kiros applying constant pressure on Carmen right here, who again looks for that big uppercut. Kiros goes downstairs now along the ropes. Nice left hook at the end of that three-punch combination. And Kiro's managing to maintain this pressure without wearing himself out right now. 
Put well, those flurries together when he's ready. Well, Corey, that's where the experience comes in, too. He realized that he could actually take um, Dylan's punches, punching power. So he's not too worried about his punching power, but just to keep walking him down and keep pressuring him. The combination off the ropes from Carmen, who spins out into the center of the ring. You have to like that if you're in the corner of Dylan Carmen. Chopping overhand right from Kiros there. And a left that's, hook. That's right, Corey. And Dylan can afford for those punches to get through. He's a taller fighter. He needs to get his hands up. Well, you can certainly tell that Carmen doesn't mind to fight on the inside, but it certainly isn't in his best interest against a cagey fighter like Heroes, who again puts a nice combination together up top. That's right, Corey. It's, he should not be there. He should, exactly what he's doing right now is boxing, staying away, pop the jab, and set up the punches. Final 10 seconds of round four. Another tough one to score here. And around five begins in this eight round a heavyweight affair to kick off Global Legacy of Fight Night. And boy, if you thought this was going to be a, a victory lap for Dylan Carmen after winning the Canadian the Canadian heavyweight title, uh, it is certainly not that. He is most definitely in a fight tonight against Benito Piros. He's definitely in a fight tonight, Corey. And uh, what he needs to do is start getting busier, busier, busier. The fight, he's already established himself. He's got the rust, or the time off that he needed to get off. So now it's time for him to go forward and start letting his hands go. I think one of the issues that we're seeing here, Troy, is that when Carmen isn't actually throwing the jab out there, when he's just holding his arm out there, Kiros is still able to just walk through it. He's not giving him any detriment uh, or any reason not to just walk in and get right on his chest and bang away. Well, what Kiros actually sees from Dylan is that Dylan's throwing one punch combos. He needs to start adding more punches to his repertoire. Put more punches together. Not just one. There was a nice one a moment ago, a left uppercut. Kind of an up jab from Dylan Carmen. We haven't seen that yet. Quick uppercut on the inside from Carmen once again. probably been the most successful shot for him thus far tonight. That right uppercut, left hook to the body as well. It is working, but he needs to put more of it together. But like I said, Corey, what I would like to see from Dylan is actually him popping that jab and staying, give himself a little bit more distance. The punches will look more effective and they will land more clean, a lot cleaner, if he was able to just get a little bit more distance in between him and Kiros. And to your point, Troy, uh, about Carmen and his activity level so far, especially when they get on the inside, it's Kiros who looks like he has a little bit more urgency on his offense right now. He's fighting like a guy who knows he's in his opponent's home country and he needs to do a little bit more. That's right. Well, the one thing that makes everything even, even as a smaller fighter is when you get closer, the fight game is exactly the same. That's been the geography uh, thus far, thanks to Benito Heroes. We take a look in his corner. Still has not taken a seat on the stool yet. Take a look at some of the action from round five. 
here's Dylan taking his time. We're looking for the the bet the proper shots to hit Kiro's with. Kiro's, as you can see, he's a smaller fighter. He's throwing he's th he's throwing what he feels they can get through. And the most effective punches for Kiro's is those hooking punches, hooking, hooking, the hooking punches. And getting back to what you just said about Dylan not sitting down, he's in shape, Corey. Round six begins in this eight round affair. And this is about that time, Troy, when we're going to see who's in shape. Is it the fighter in Dylan Carmen, who is a full-time boxer who knew that this fight was coming? Or can Benito Quiroz, the guy who's really been a part-time fighter throughout his career, if he could stand and trade for another three rounds with the Canadian champion? Quiroz turning up the pace a little bit here at the, at the beginning of round six. part-time fighter and also a game fighter. He's there. His only strategy that he has is going forward. Unless Dylan changes his mindset by moving him backwards, like what he just did just now. Certainly, when he is fighting, he's in there to fight. That's right. Another uppercut on the inside from Carmen. Tough to get a lot of leverage on there. And on those shots, when you have a guy right on top of your chest, though. It is hard, but what you have to do is start popping shots to the body, slow this, slow this guy down. Slow heroes down. Don't just go head hunting, because that's what Dylan's doing right now. He's going head hunting. As you can see, heroes can take a punch. Carmen said he wanted to get more in tune with his boxing skills in this fight and show the audience that he could be a slick boxer as well. And there have been times when we have seen that for flashes. But for the most part, whether Carmen is losing this fight or not, it's been Kiros who's fighting the type of fight that he wants, particularly right now. Exactly. Pin him again to the rope and let his hands go. That's exactly what Kiros is doing, and he knows the game plan. His game plan is only walking him down. Keep walking him down. Ho hopefully, the, the bigger guy slows down and let his hands go. At this point, you do have to start thinking about the scorecards as well. And Carmen has that knockdown in the bank. But Troy, as you know, there are a lot of judges out there who just like pure raw aggression. And it's been Kiros who's been marching forward. That's right, Corey. And as the fight goes on, you can see both fighters are getting a little bit tired. They're not throwing as many punches as they, as they were. Herman trying to create a little distance here. Fires that right hand down the middle. A couple shots right at the bell from Kiros. Carmen most definitely has something to think about in these final two rounds. These two rounds that's coming up is the championship rounds for him. They were only going eight rounds. So this is where he needs to show and put his punches together, just like what he's doing here in the... Kiros catches him with a nice body shot, comes up to the top. This is where Carmen cannot get himself caught, is against the ropes. Because that's Kiros' game plan. Pin him up against the rope and let his hands go. Troy, do you think that's how he steals the round, Corey. Do you think that Carmen has been a little bit too comfortable on those ropes and maybe thinking that he's landing a little bit more often than he is? What I would have liked to see with, uh, with Carmen is start throwing a lot more punches. If he has it in the tank, I want to see him throw a lot more punches. 
keep this guy exactly where he has him right now and let his hands go. And that's exactly what he needs to do. Again, these are very tough rounds to score as we begin uh, round seven. You can make a case for both guys in almost every single round, save for the one with the knockdown. now even starting to work behind a jab. We haven't seen that so far. And this is more of the pace and the geography where Carmen could be successful. Carmen is successful right now because he's actually moving Kiros back and Kiros is not walking forward. And when he has him at the distance, he's just letting his hands go. He can catch him. Pop that jab, pop that jab. That's what he has to do. Keep the smaller fighter out. Let his hands go, hit the body. It is interesting that throughout his career that the fighters who have really troubled Dylan Carmen have been smaller fighters. And usually they've come in a different form than heroes. They've mostly been movers, guys like Silvera Luis who can use the ring a little bit. But again tonight, having difficulty what he's with a having man. What he's having difficulties is the fact that Kiros is able to push him back. Kiros is the guy with no pretty much formula where all he does is move, move forward. Keeps his hands up, goes forward. And once, hopefully he can land some of those shots again that he's throwing right now, the hooking shots coming over the top. Dylan's hands are not high enough. It is interesting to watch because, of course, you and I were ringside calling the action when Dylan was walking Eric Martel back, and Eric Martel, who's six foot five, 260 pounds, but tonight, Benito Quiros is the one pressing the action. But like you said, Corey, Dylan has had problems with smaller guys. And this is just one of those situations. Kiros is a smaller guy and keep pushing him back. That's his strategy. Push him back, come over the top. This has been a better round for Carmen. Excellent combination there, but gets cracked for good measure by a left hook right at the bell. The eighth and final round of our opening contest. And it has been a tough introduction into the international scene for Dylan Carmen here. No handouts for him from Global Legacy Boxing tonight. And that's probably a good thing. There is no use in matching a guy like Carmen pillow soft by any means. That's not how he's going to get to the Commonwealth title. No, it isn't, Corey. You need it. With the, tough, with the tougher and harder opponents, it only means that he needs to step up his game. Kiros for this last round came out just a little bit more aggressive. He started off pushing, pushing Carmen back. Given the nature of the fight so far, you'd expect some urgency on both ends here, knowing how close this fight has been. to the body from Heroes. And we're trying to roll with some of these shots, but gets pushed back once again. Benito Kiros just keeps coming. Kiros keeps on coming, like I said, Corey. He keeps walking forward, he keeps moving. There's no... There's no style of st strategy that he has except to move forward. Mouthpiece knocked out from Dylan Carmen. Gives him a breather. 
we approach the final minute of this fight. And realistically, this one could be hanging in the balance. Dylan had some good straight shots coming off. Uh, he's popping that straight right, straight down the middle, and that's what he needs to keep on doing for the rest of this fight, the rest of the duration of the fight. A cut over the eye of Benito Quiros. So Carmen making a statement in the home stretch of this fight. Right now, the last the last 30 seconds of this fight is what the, the judges will remember. So Dylan needs to let his hands go. Don't hold on. Right don't into the clinch. <laughs> yeah, go straight into the clinch. But this is the time where he need, he needs to dig as a champion. Couple good shots from the outside from Carmen. As we head towards the finish line. A good action fight from these two heavyweights in our opener. Final 10 seconds. Coming, coming out to the last 10 seconds. It's unbelievable. Oh, down goes Kiros on a monstrous left hook. Both men traded left hooks. Carmen's got there first. And now we'll see if Kiros can make it to the final bell. Michael Griffith has waved it off. A miracle knockout victory right at the buzzer for Dylan Carmen. Persever perseverance, Corey. Right as the clock struck zero, Troy. Perseverance. It's always unbelievable what can happen in a fight. You never know. And it only takes one punch. Wow, and we're going to have some viewers at home who might have something to say about that call, but let's take a look at the shot that caused it. As you can see, Corey, Dylan's throwing punches straight down the middle. The straight punches is what really affects Kiros. As Kiros comes over with a hook, another straight right, and pop in the jab. This is where he catches Dylan. As Dylan turns him, he comes back with the straight punches, lets his hands go, lets his hands go, and catches him with a nice hooking left hand. His hook just happened to get there first. Both men going for the same shot. You could have some debate about the call at the end of the fight, though, considering time had run out, and in some ways, uh, a little bit reminiscent of a call that had to be made on Melbourne Taylor against Julio Cesar Chavez, you could say that you let Kiros finish the fight, but Michael Griffin clearly determined that if the fight were to continue, Kiros wouldn't have been able to. I think as when you when you see someone hurt the way that um, Kiros was, Dylan would have jumped on him right away. It might not, although it, although there was only about a not even a second left in the fight, Corey, it could it could be a, a hurtful experience for Kiros. So a tough judgment call for Michael Griffin and a tough night for Dylan Carmen who pulls it out with a knockout victory in the eighth and final round. Let's take a look at the knockout once again as Pierre Bernier makes this official. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes as referee Michael Griffin stops the contest. Official time, three minutes of the eighth round. Your winner by TKO, Dallin Bay Country, Carmen. Dylan Carmen, your winner, and still the Canadian heavyweight champion as he embraces his knockout victim, Benito Quiros. We'll be back with more of Global Legacy Fight Night right after the break.